and Mark Wolzenkraft. Am I pronouncing that right? Wolzenkraft. I actually thought you guys were gonna like bike up on the stage, like, do a big jump. And uh, thank you very much for donating this bike to the steam engine. <laughs> Good evening. Hello. Thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, my name is Heather Gentry. This is Mark Wusenkraft. And uh, <laughs> uh, we co-founded the Green Bay Bicycle Collective in 2011. Uh, get the clickers right there. Can we do that on YouTube? Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> There we go. All right. So uh, we are a not-for-profit bicycle education and advocacy group. So we are an official 501c3 these days, which is pretty cool. Um, and we're here to chat about e-bikes uh, and the Green Bay Bicycle Infrastructure. Uh, so there's our mission statement. But what we what we really do is we encourage people. We are trying to see more ridership in Green Bay. We encourage people to get out and ride. We do the bike hosting community bike rides. And we want to see more uh, bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure in Green Bay, and we do that by communicating with our local officials and uh, advocating for more infrastructure. All right. So we're here to talk about e-bikes, and uh, we have a couple of great examples here right now. But um, so believe it or not, e-bikes have been around since the 1890s, and about a hundred years later, they uh, finally started to get it a little bit right. Uh, so in the 1990s, that's when e-bikes started to come around a little bit more. Um, technology, uh, basically uh, Bosch is one of the big uh, uh, manufacturers of the batteries and the drive systems for e-assist bicycles and um, and uh, Shimano, Shimano's the other big one, I'm sorry. Uh, the technology has made it easier to manufacture and had driven down the price on them. Um, and going from 2016 to 2017, sales in the U.S. has jumped 25%. Uh, and I would like to add that uh, e-bikes, though they might be new to us in this area or in the United States in general, one out of every three bikes sold in Europe is an electric assist bike. Oh. All right, why are they so popular? Uh, the e emergency is not uh, for e-bikes, but um, the, uh, essentially they make great uh, support vehicles for events and races. Uh, for instance, also over here we have a full suspension police bike uh, that the police department has uh, let us borrow for today's uh, talk. And let's see here, there's also the cargo bike aspect, so you can carry more and make it easier, uh, much like the Luna Coffee, uh, Luna Coffee Bike, like down in the pier. Uh, they do a great job with that thing. Uh, you can also pull a trailer. Uh, Heather, you... Oh, yes. So as a mom of two children, and if I don't, I just don't want to get in the car, I put it in the trailer. If I had an electric assist bike, I can go much farther and run our errands and make a big day of it. Yeah, and uh, it also makes it riding accessible to people of all abilities and ages. It's uh, the great equalizer. So let's say you don't have the legs to carry you, but you still want to get out there and ride your bike with your friends. E-assist definitely helps that. And keep up with your spouse, too. Yeah, that too. <laughs> so here's some examples of some bikes, and you can see some here as well. Um, and thank you, Officer Bob, for bringing out the police bike tonight. Yeah, lots of fun stuff we got. Uh, Cargo bike, full suspension, mountain bikes, police bikes. Uh, the Copenhagen old, wheel. The Copenhagen wheel, which is just an add-on. I think that's called a unimoke. It's an electric, uh, almost like beach cruiser. And then you got something for the whole family down there at the end with the uh, cargo. <laughs> and a couple of seats for the, for the kids. So, um, the CEO of Pivot Cycles, uh, he says, e-bike riders get uh, the enjoyable part of cycling without the massive suffering of climbing huge hills. So, um, obviously, the bicycle companies think that e-bikes are great, so, and they're a great thing, which is funny because uh, this is essentially what the bicycle companies said in the 1800s to get people to buy bikes, like buy bikes so you don't have to walk up the hill, you can ride your bike up the hill. And then the car companies took that from the bicycle companies, because why would you want a bike up the hill when you can ride in a car up the hill? Now the bicycle companies are taking it back. So. <laughs> 
So we have, uh, there are three classes of e-bikes currently, uh, one, two, and three. This is the one right here. Um, it is pedal assist. It's only, the, the motor in it is only activated by pedaling, and you can go up to 20 miles per hour. Class two has, it's about the same thing as a class one, but there's a throttle, so you have a battery. It's essentially kind of like a little, little motorbike. Uh, and then class three is uh, what we have here, Officer Bob brought us. Uh, this is a maximum assist. It's pedal assist only, but it can go up to 28 miles per hour. So as you can see, there's going to, there's, with these three classes, what, what's legal, what's not legal, what's acceptable, what is, what's a motorcycle and what's a bike? <laughs> um, currently in Wisconsin, e-bikes are legal, but they are still trying to figure out the parameters of what legal is. Um, it is in legislation currently, and it won't be back in session until next spring. Uh, in the meantime, the Department of Natural Resources came out with NR45, and they state that on the state trails, you can have an e-bike, it can be pedal assist only, and you can only go up to 50 miles per hour, so you can't max her out. But that's to keep everyone safe, because they're still pretty new to everybody. All right. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> Bikeability in Greater Green Bay. Now that you have your e-bike, <laughs> where are you going to go with it? <laughs> this is a, a map of Brown County and all the bicycle facilities that are available to us in Brown County. Um, there are several different types. Um, let's see, five foot bicycle lane, that's our like blue here. So that is where you're riding around and there's a striped lane. And it's clearly marked, no problem, right? Uh, we have multi-use trails, Fox River Trail, um, East River Trail, you've got Barrett's Creek, and way up there you've got uh, Reforestation Camp. Uh, we also have wide outside lanes, which I think are a thing of the past, but they're still around. And then paved shoulders, which are county roads. I suppose that will, that will help you a little bit. <laughs> all in all, uh, in Green Bay proper, we have about 6% of our roads, entire, roads, 6% of them have bike facilities. And in the county, 4%. So, what do we do with these types of infrastructure? Not all bike infrastructure is created equally. So, uh, folks who are a little more avid cyclists, a little more um, confident, uh, may not even, just will take the lane. They're not even worried about a bike facility. Uh, that's a really low number. <laughs> in the town. <laughs> Cars are king, if you didn't know those people. Uh, but if you create more infrastructure or something that people are just ready, uh, a little more comfortable with, more people will use it. All right. One of the biggest things for Brown County and the city, uh, city of Green Bay uh, to do is getting that interconnectivity. Um, as we've seen, there's not a lot of infrastructure available to cyclists at the moment, uh, or you know, just you know, cyclists or just people on bikes. Essentially, they're they're not the same. But uh, connecting our trails and paths to increase accessibility and mobility essentially is opening it up to everybody, um, as compared to just to where cars came. So, how can we figure out? where people need to go most. We have some infrastructure, but we kind of need to know what's next, how to connect better, how to get these parts and pieces put together. So we have a loop or a regular way to access the resources around town. And heat maps are huge. Heat maps are a great resource. Uh, this would be from the Strava heat map website. So as what we saw before, everything that we saw before for essentially just the infrastructure that we already have. Um, this is where people are actually riding as compared to just the infrastructure. So this is a quick and easy way to look at how people are going about the day via bicycle. And this is just only Strava. There's multiple tracking and uh, essentially other ride tracking pages out there, but uh, Strava is the big one, um, as I'm sure everyone heard about when they were giving away accidentally 
government secrets from where they were, uh, where, where government employees were walking around and doing their morning runs at secret bases in the Middle East, and that's where they found them. But <laughs> with, uh, with Strava, like, you can see um, going down the west side of the river, that's Broadway. That's a bright white strip. That is a bicycle lane. The brighter the color, the more people use that. So anyone who has Strava and, and logs into it and it follows you, where you're going, it lights up. So you can see the reforestation camp, uh, bears. Fox River Trail, everything's bright white. And then, like, going up the Bay Shore there, you have Nicolet, where there are, as far as I know, there's no bicycle facilities out there, but people are riding it, so that might be a good idea to put something out there. So it's a, a lot of free information floating around in the world right now. <laughs> so we can use this information to find out where people are going, where people maybe are trying to get to, because you have some other colors here. Um, People are riding around. I mean, look at these county roads. This is way outside of Green Bay. People are out there using them. So are they just exercising? Most likely. But we would like to promote getting people to maybe download some kind of app and let Green Bay know where you want to go. So where do you go with questions or concerns? If in your neighborhood you don't have any kind of bike facilities or maybe even just a crosswalk or if there's a problem issue with lights. Um, something that we uh, accomplished a few years back is we worked with the city to change the name of the Traffic Commission to the Traffic, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Commission. And what that did is it gave everyone a place with bicycle and pedestrian issues to go directly and, and talk to them. Otherwise, if um, you're not worried so much about the Green Bay area proper, uh, somewhere out in the county, if there's a county road that's just a real big favorite of everyone to ride and needs facilities, contact your county representative. If you have any other questions about us or um, some things the Wisconsin Bicycle Federation are doing around the state as far as legislation and e-bikes, uh, there you are. So, how, um, how does this work then? Like, where is the battery? Where is the drivetrain? For those of you that don't know like, what an e bike is, how would this function? For sure. So, uh, you have your computer up here. And the computer tells you what level you're on, how fast you're going. Um, it usually has uh, some different levels, so you can use an economy or a conservative level if you want to go high, low, things like that. There's your battery right here and here, and then there is usually a key uh, to start her up. Uh, let's see, Officer Bob, this one is pedal assist only, and this can go up to, tw uh, probably past, there's a governor on this one. So, this, so how fast can this one go? It went 24 miles an hour on the way over here. Okay. <laughs> 48, but... Okay, and that sure. Was, that was up, uphill, up the, up the bridge. Mm -hmm. Were you chasing oh, somebody? <laughs> it was not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't run radar on those. <laughs> so this is like lithium-ion battery in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how long will the charge last on something like this? It all depends on what mode you have it on. There's like five different settings. Okay. So there's one that's got turbo. That will give you, that uses the most battery power. Right. And it, the bike will go the fastest. So, and then it goes all the way down to eco. And it's like 72 miles you can go with it wow. as uh, sure. assist. Okay. And this has the lights and everything on there? I probably it's shouldn't just, touch yeah, it. Yeah, it's got lights on it. <laughs> I'm really itching to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions for for these folks? Yeah, how does the battery regenerate its power if you're pedaling or going? It's a good question. Like like a Prius would? Yeah. Like, yeah. Does it do that? Is, is, it, is there a cam in there or is it just purely like plugging in from the wall. It is. It's a plug, trickle charge, I guess. Um, and it uh, charges pretty quick, I think. Regenerate it. You got yourself a potential paddle oh, there. Dynamic right? braking. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some of them do. Some of them do. As you're paddling, you are charging the battery. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. How much torque can the thing do if I bought one of those here and then I moved to San Francisco, what would happen? Uh -huh. Wow. That's beyond my pay grade. <laughs> 
Um, well, I think that uh, regardless, I mean, you might burn through your battery power more just because there would obviously be more hills. But at the same time, I mean, it's you're assisting your pedals, so it may, it'll make those hills easier. And then, and then the other question is, are you guys affiliated? I mean, this is, I can see a really good idea here. Uh, if it was incorporated in a suburban community, the public transportation, or eventually cars were kind of made so it was automatically you could put this. this well, that, that's kind of the idea. Uh, that's, that's the idea. I mean, I myself, when I'm not, when I don't have my kids, I can go all day long. But when I put that extra load on there, an e-bike is going to help me leave my car at home. Yeah. Give some perspective. I don't think people understand how actually easy it is to get around town on a bicycle. Downtown to the Kapir Bridge and back is just a little over 12 miles, round trip. If you're downtown, it's less than four or five miles to get to anywhere. Um, at 10 miles an hour, I mean, if you take an extra 20 minutes to get to work, we can get to work on a bicycle. So um, this is a really great idea to cut down on gas consumption and we help. Mm -hmm. I would agree with Justin there. No. Uh, I used to drive my bike to work, which is about eight miles from home, right in the bus, and I stopped doing it because of the infrastructure that was uh, lacking. And I'm talking about just simple street improvement. Uh, there's a lot of ditches out there now, holes, bumps, all kinds of stuff. And it's uh, pretty hazardous out there right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, Sounds like you go to the Traffic Bicycle and Pedestrian Commission. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. Just a little quick. Uh, for someone who's totally new at something like this, do you provide like, a quick class or a walkthrough for someone who has no idea how to work these things? Uh, certified bike dealer is going to sell these. Every single uh, bike dealer in town sells these. You're not going to find one at Walmart. Yeah. Uh, it's all, all the bike shops in town, and mm -hmm. they, they are a mountain of information. And they will help you. They will assist you. I actually just rode my first e-bike uh, maybe about two weeks ago, and I was very suspicious about it because I'm very much just a guy on a bicycle. I love riding my bike, and I was like, "Well, I'm going to give this a try." And uh, I went into it negatively, and honestly, my my entire perspective got changed on it the minute that I started riding. It's like I understood completely where they were coming from with it. Uh, people in the community who like whose knees are shot, let's say, and they still want to get up there. It makes it that much easier for them to get up there, not only just for a physical aspect, but a social aspect. Uh, how about what plug we got here? Go ahead. Michelle? Yes. Does the um, bicycle collect a cat and your mask coming up? <laughs> we do. Oh, wow. Oh, Michelle. <laughs> Famous promotion. Uh, actually, so some of the things that we do is uh, with increasing ridership around town, promoting community bike rides. We have a very large one tomorrow. The last Thursday of every month is Critical Mass. We meet at City Deck, 8 p.m., bring lights, and you can ride with a minimum of 100 of your friends and neighbors. Leisure pays. Yes, computational pays. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Very much. Can I just add one thing? Sure. Real, real quick. We have we have an ordinance in Green Bay. You're supposed to. I don't need that. I'm coming. I'm all talking. <laughs> We have an ordinance in Green Bay. You're supposed to have your bike registered. It's free. It doesn't cost. They used to charge. It's free. Every spring, we sell about 400 bikes that people don't register, don't have license on them. So if you, if you get a new bike or if you have a bike at home, please just register it. Stop down at the PD. Give them your information. Put it in the system so if somebody, for some reason, takes it, uh, we can get you your bike back. Every single bike shop in town will register your bike for free, and so will we. Yeah. 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 Yeah.